Hi everyone, it's Tim here again, and sat in front of the world's most boring video background. Uh, but don't worry, this uh, is only temporary, we're going to be putting up some much more interesting diagrams shortly. Uh, but the reason I'm sat in front of this um, very boring garage wall is that this is where we're going to be storing or uh, installing our home storage battery system. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be explaining in this video uh, the options that we've been considering um, for what we're going to get installed and why that particular arrangement might be beneficial to us. Um, but there's several options to consider because not all of them have everything that we want. Uh, so it's a case of um, weighing up the pros and the cons. And so what I'm going to do in this video is explain the, the different pros and cons for the, the three different systems that I'm going to explain to you. Uh, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll, you'll understand the sorts of things that it's worth thinking about when you're planning your own home storage battery system uh, and what the relative um, benefits and drawbacks might be of those different systems. Uh, I've tried to prepare the diagrams and the information as best as I can based on my uh, not first-hand knowledge of this sort of thing. Um, it's, I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, I've learned a lot from the, um, the various sources on the internet that I can find, but I may have misinterpreted some of the information. So if you know better, please let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, some of the numbers that I'm gonna show you might be slightly wrong. Um, so if you have first-hand knowledge or know any better um, than me, then please let me know if you spot any mistakes and that will help me uh, um, improve my understanding and uh, help me make better decisions, which I'll be uh, very grateful for if you can help me out as well. Uh, but I think I've got most of the numbers more or less correct. So uh, let's, let's work on the assumption that I've, uh, I've, done, I've done a good job researching this and uh, we'll, see, we'll see where we end up at the end of the video. Uh, so uh, we've had uh, conversations with a solar panel and battery um, storage installer for several months and we're, we're effectively nearing the top of their list for, for getting this system installed. Um, so what we're planning on getting is a 7.1 kilowatt uh, system, which will be split um, east and west, half and half. So roughly three and a half kilowatts on, on the east and three and a half kilowatts uh, on the west. And that will be coupled with um, uh, a battery storage system at the moment that will um, be a give energy nine and a half kilowatt hour um, battery. Uh, however, since the conversations we had initially with, um, with our installer, I, in my... Um, in my genius decided that actually why don't we get two nine and a half kilowatt hour batteries because that will um, help us cover our heating as well as our um, normal electrical usage during the day uh, and that slightly changed the conversation now you may be thinking well okay why are you trying to cover your heating using battery storage so here's my uh, justification for that if i can charge up um, uh, roughly let's say 20 kilowatt hours of battery during um, the, the off-peak octopus go four hour period I can effectively run the heating and the electrical uh, rest, the, the rest of the electrical needs of our house using just off-peak electricity, which at the moment I'm paying um, seven and a half pence a kilowatt hour. So that makes it all of a sudden significantly cheaper than uh, using gas to heat your home because um, when you're using gas, you're uh, you're burning it at something like eighty or ninety percent efficient. When you're using an electrical heating system. Uh, based on a heat pump, for example, which is what we're aiming to do, that is roughly 400% efficient, which means that you get four times as much heat uh, as the amount of energy that you put in through to your heat pump. So last winter, using our gas boiler, we were using something in the region of 60 kilowatt hours per day in the coldest months. Uh, for a heat pump to do the equivalent amount of heating, you'd only need about 15, uh, one five kilowatt hours of electrical energy. So we use roughly five kilowatt hours of uh, electricity per day just in our general usage. Add that on to the uh, 15 kilowatt hours of energy that we'd need for the heating and that gives you roughly 20 kilowatt hours. So two nine and a half kilowatt hour give energy batteries would almost exactly meet that requirement. If there's a little bit of solar as well, then that will all help uh, make up any of the difference. So that was my justification for, um, for using uh, two batteries instead of one. Uh, whether that's cost effective is a different question. Uh, it, I'm not going to explain my calculations because um, uh, it's a little bit tedious and not really appropriate for this particular video. Um, but on, from a back of the envelope calculation, I, I deduced that it was roughly break even uh, based on the current prices uh, to get the second battery to, uh, to allow us to, to run our heating using um, overnight uh, cheap rate electricity. Uh, I might be slightly wrong, but that's the ballpark figure and I think, it's, I think it just about makes sense. Uh, and of course, it, um, uh, if you use overnight electricity, that's greener than, than day, 
daytime electricity anyway, so there's that benefit, which is actually something that's, uh, that's quite important to us as well. Uh, so anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to the actual options that we're considering for these, um, these home storage batteries and, uh, and explain what the relative pros and cons are of those different systems. But with that um, uh, preamble uh, uh, in mind as you, uh, as you see what these systems look like. So when we first spoke to our, um, our solar panel and battery storage installers, uh, they proposed uh, an AC coupled give energy system using a, a solar edge inverter with optimizers on the solar panels, uh, which would then um, obviously convert the DC from the solar panels into AC that would then be, then, then be coupled to the give energy AC inverter, which would then uh, convert the AC back into DC for storage in the batteries. Right, so this is your classic uh, AC coupled uh, battery storage system. And this is the sort of thing that you'd uh, typically get if you already had an existing solar panel system and then you retrofitted batteries to that system. This is, uh, this is usually what you would end up with. Um, so that's great. Um, I was quite happy with that. Uh, however, the Give Energy um, AC inverter runs at three kilowatts, which means that the maximum rate that we could charge those batteries would be three kilowatts, I think. It might be a little bit lower than that. I've heard talk of 2.6. I might be wrong, but um, I'm working on the assumption that uh, I'm, overnight I'd be able to charge the batteries at three kilowatts. Now here's the problem. Uh, three kilowatts multiplied by the four hours of uh, cheap octopus go overnight um, tariff is only 12 kilowatt hours. Now that would be insufficient to completely fill up those two nine and a half kilowatt hour give energy batteries. So that's, that's a slight problem, uh, which then leads me on to uh, the second option that our installer suggested, which was a DC coupled solar edge uh, battery storage system, where we keep the, uh, the solar edge inverter as before, but this time we, instead of the Give Energy nine and a half kilowatt hour batteries, we replace those with the solar edge uh, energy banks, which are 10 kilowatt hours, but I believe uh, I, they can only um, provide 9.7 kilowatt hours or something like that. So let's assume uh, 9.7 to 10 kilowatt hours uh, for those, those batteries. So roughly equivalent to the, um, the Give Energy ones. Uh, and um, that would then still allow you to um, couple to the uh, optimizers on the solar panels, but um, you then have a five kilowatt charge rate, which is great because multiplied by the four kilowatt and the four hours of cheap overnight rate gives you 20 kilowatt hours of potential charge that you can uh, you can fill up your batteries in that four hour period overnight and that's great that would be everything that we would need the full 20 kilowatt hours uh, or slightly less given that it's uh, 9.7 kilowatt hours per per battery that you can use so that's that was an interesting um, option um, but then i thought well hang on a minute can you do uh, power cut um, backup with that system and it seems that that might not be necessarily possible uh, certainly with the HD wave inverters that, um, uh, that our installer was suggesting. Uh, I believe it's possible, now please correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know for sure, it's very difficult to get a, a, a solid answer to this, but I believe that you can couple the energy bank uh, solar edge batteries to their storage inverter which does allow you to have a battery backup system. But again, very hard for me to get a solid answer on that. So I'm working on the assumption at the moment that we won't, we wouldn't be able to get um, battery backup in the in the case of a of a power cut uh, with that option too. So then that got me thinking. Well, okay, if we've got if we're considering a DC coupled system uh, using solar edge batteries, how about we go back to considering Give Energy, but this time using their five kilowatt hybrid inverter connected to the, the two uh, sides of the, uh, of the solar panels because the hybrid inverter has two string inputs. So that would then get us the, the battery um, backup for, for power cuts back again, which would be great. Um, but it means that we wouldn't be able to use um, optimizers for the, the solar panels. Uh, so that may or may not be an advantage because um, from what I can tell, Optimizers only make a difference if there's um, shading on your solar panels. Now, from what, from what I can tell with our situation, we get very little shading, almost basically none during the, the, the vast majority of the day. We get a little bit in the morning from a tree in the east and a little bit in the evening from a tree in the west. 
but for the vast majority of the rest of the time, there's no shading at all. And I think in that situation, actually you don't really gain much benefit from having optimizers. So that's something to consider, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more in a minute, but um, uh, the advantage, again, of, the, of this DC coupled give energy system is that, again, from what I can tell from the data sheets, please correct me if I'm wrong, I think that the give energy 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries can charge at a maximum rate of 4.72 kilowatts, uh, which would give us 19 kilowatt hours of potential charge over that four hour block during um, the cheap overnight rate from Octopus Go, which again would be more or less completely covering our needs for both heating uh, and uh, the rest of our electrical needs uh, during the coldest months of the winter. So bearing in mind those three options, let's bring up uh, a table summarizing all of the pros and cons that I believe um, uh, uh, are representative of these particular systems. So this, um, this table here shows uh, what I consider a, a, a pro, a benefit in blue, and a con or a downside in orange. So from, for the AC coupled given energy system that we described first, the main benefits that I can see is, well, it will use the optimizers for the um, solar edge system, which would be good. Uh, and the main advantage for AC coupled systems is that you get much better data for all of the various different energy flows um, because you can put CT clamps around all of the AC cables basically, which means apps like, um, like My Energy, for example, who um, provides the, the Zappi and the Eddy, we're also intending to get those installed by the way, so I probably should have mentioned that before, um, but that would make um, monitoring those much easier and, and easier to manage. Um, so that, but that's probably the main benefit of the AC coupled system. Um, and the other thing that um, I really like about the Give Energy ba batteries in particular is that they have the, um, this uh, lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry, which I think is, um, is a better option for, uh, for home storage because um, it's fully recyclable at, at the end of life, which is not the case for the Solar Edge um, batteries, which are the lithium nickel manganese cobalt chemistry, which is the same sort of um, chemistry you get in, uh, in electric vehicles typically. Uh, and that is not currently 100% recyclable at the end of life. Now, I'm assuming clever people are working on this and hopefully we'll find a solution for this within the next few years, but let's assume that, that's, that it's not gonna be the case that they're fully recyclable. So I, might, I would much prefer the lithium ion phosphate um, battery chemistry, and it's much, much safer for a, um, uh, for, for a home situation. It's much less likely to catch fire, for example. I know it's a very, very unlikely thing to happen. Um, they're all very safe nowadays, but uh, even so, still a nice bit of peace of mind if, you, if you've got a, a battery that's uh, impossible to catch on fire, basically, in your house. Um, so those are the main benefits of, of the AC coupled system. But the main um, downside is, as I explained, I think I can only charge and discharge the battery at three kilowatts, which means I can only, only charge up the batteries to 12 kilowatt hours um, overnight, which is insufficient to cover our needs for heating and electrical usage. So that might be a deal breaker. Option two for the Solar Edge DC coupled system, again, it can still use the optimizers because it's, um, it's a Solar Edge inverter coupled with, um, with the solar panels. Uh, but because it's DC coupled, it means it's much harder to monitor the data flow uh, of, of the energy that's fly, flowing around your cables, um, which makes it much more difficult to manage the Zappi and Yeti, for example. Uh, I believe there are ways around that, um, but I think it's a little bit fiddlier than, than the AC coupled system. If you've got experience with a DC coupled system with a Zappi and an Eddy, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'd be really interested to hear how you get on with that, because um, it might be that I'm worrying about nothing. Um, but the main disadvantage, I think, from option two, the solar edge system, is that it doesn't have a power backup option. I don't know how true that is. Uh, if we can connect it to a, connect the batteries to a storage inverter instead, maybe that's that's possible that we could get that battery um, power cut back up back, uh, back again. But I, again, I don't know for sure. I can't find that information in uh, any sort of reliable way on the internet. So if you've got experience with this, please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear. The main advantage of the Solar Edge DC cold system is that it can charge and discharge at five kilowatts, which is great because in four hours you can charge up 20 kilowatt hours, no problem. And that would completely cover our needs for both heating and uh, electrical usage. So that would be the most ideal uh, situation from that perspective. Uh, however, I think that the Solar Edge DC cold system is probably the most expensive of the three because the batteries are, um, I think they're quite a bit pricier than the, than the equivalent Give Energy batteries. Um, so the, yeah, that might be that might be an issue. So that leads me on to the pros and pros and cons of option three, which is the DC coupled give energy system. 
The one downside that I can see is that we couldn't then use optimizers on the solar panels because it's not coupled to a solar edge inverter. It goes straight into the solar panel will go straight into the give energy hybrid inverter. Uh, because we're back to the give energy batteries now, we're back to the uh, lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry, which I like. And we've got the battery um, back up in the case of a power cut, which I really like as well, because we're, we're slightly um, more rural here than, uh, than most people probably. So we, we have had a couple of power cuts in the last year, one of which lasted for more than, more than a day. So it would be really nice to have that backup option if possible. Um, I know they're very rare, but even so it would be, it would be nice to have the option. Uh, and I think from what I can tell, and again, please correct me if I'm wrong, the uh, hybrid inverter would couple to the, um, the give NAD batteries with a maximum charge and discharge rate of uh, something in the region of 4.7 kilowatts, from what I can tell. Uh, I, get, I got that number from multiplying the maximum charge current of, I think it was 80 amps, um, by multiplied by the 59 volts uh, maximum voltage for the, the give energy 9.5 kilowatt hour um, batteries from the data sheet that I could get online. Now, if I'm misinterpreting that, if I'm getting that wrong, um, then it might be lower than that. But working on the assumption that, uh, that we can charge and discharge the batteries at 4.7 kilowatts for four hours um, uh, overnight Octopus Go uh, uh, off-peak period, that would allow us to charge up 19 kilowatt hours of those batteries, which is essentially the 100% capacity. And that would very nearly cover our needs, I think, for the, uh, for the winter, both heating and electrical usage. So that would be great. Uh, and the other main advantage of option three is that I think that would probably be the cheapest option because it's only using one inverter again and the batteries are a lot cheaper um, or, or slightly cheaper. But then also we don't have the, um, the optimizers, which um, obviously has a cost involved as well. So I think that might be the cheapest option. I haven't actually done the sums uh, 100% um, and I do need to talk to my installers about, about this option so they can probably give me a better quote. But I'm, I'm working on the assumption that that's probably the cheapest option at this stage. So let's talk briefly about the, um, uh, the lack of optimizers. I think because we don't have much shading, it's, it, we, it might be only a marginal benefit to have optimizers uh, in our situation, if at all. And I've, from what I've found out um, by reading around on the internet, it might actually be uh, detrimental to have optimizers in a situation where you don't have any shading at all. So because we don't have very much shading, or basically no shading during the vast majority of the day, it might not actually be a benefit to us to have optimizers at all. So maybe that is something that's, um, that's a non-issue. Maybe I don't need to worry about that. Uh, so it, it's looking to me at the moment like option three is probably the best option for us. But if any of you have experience of, of anything even remote, remotely resembling any, any of these three options, I'd be super interested to hear uh, your personal experience of those systems. Uh, and if you've got any advice or um, additional pros and cons that I haven't considered, I would really, really, really um, be very grateful if you could, uh, could let me know what I'm missing, and uh, any numbers that I've misinterpreted in this video that you've spotted and are shouting at the screen saying, yeah, you got this completely wrong. I, would, I, you know, I don't have first-hand experience of this. I'm only going off of what I can find on the internet and talking to my installer. Um, and um, I, it would be much better to obviously have, um, have first-hand knowledge of, of this stuff. And if, if you can explain that to me, uh, then that would be brilliant. Uh, so on that note, I'll probably leave it there for this video. It's gone on uh, far too long already. Uh, I'm, I'm intending to follow this video up. Um, I'm going to get Kat involved finally. She's, uh, I've been promising that she's going to be in, uh, in one of these videos sooner or later, and she's, she's going to help me out in the next video uh, where we're going to go around the house and we're going to turn things on and off and see what, what, uh, what items in our house draw the most power. And that will hopefully tell us what we, we would be able to run from just the battery system if there was no solar, for example. So that's gonna be, be an interesting experiment. Um, so hopefully that'll come within the next couple of weeks and uh, I'm sure you're as interested as I am in finding out uh, uh, what sort of things that um, we can run during a power cut or, um, or when, there's, uh, when there's no solar. So yeah, join us for that in the next week or two, hopefully. Um, and uh, for now, I'll say goodbye and uh, hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.